Welcome to Pure Love Talks, Season 2, Episode 6. Hey everybody, um, today we're going to be talking about toxic masculinities. It's uh, one of the topics I had put out on Instagram, um, or I asked folks what they wanted to talk about, and I was one of the topics people really responded to, uh, and um, Mandy had brought it up. And so I had asked her like, why, um, why she wanted to talk about to toxic masculinity. Um, before I begin, I just want to give a disclaimer. Um, the both of us are extremely exhausted <laughs> um, and spiritually drained. Something is happening. Yes. Don't know what it is yet, but not feeling 100%. So, you know, so I true. apologize in advance if it seems kind of lazy, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to work through no, it. not lazy. I don't like that word, if, lazy. No, 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 no. If it's slower than usual. Okay, that's good, that's good. Not up to same speed. Yeah, and apparently I'm going through some, like, internal heat, menopause or something or other. <laughs> okay, but we got, we're going to talk about toxic masculinity. <laughs> but um, and it's always been an issue for me. I mean, especially, you know, being a woman in this country, in this world. But um, because I'm raising a, a hypothetical man, you know, I worry. Hypothetical man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yes. So in my, as of now, I'm raising a man. So I. Well, you're raising a raising a boy, right? That will one day be a man if that's what happens. Yes, yes. And i want to make sure that he knows how to navigate this world in a healthy way and not be you know i guess toxic is the best word to people around him and contribute to the already humongous problem that we have with that in this um country society i have to say like when i first heard the term toxic masculinity i wasn't sure what it was but i i guess i guessed that it was um something of course talking about uh the behavior of men and i'm thinking in terms of like uh sexism and patriarchy because um you know i didn't have the term toxic masculinity when you were young um i talked to you mostly about patriarchy and sexism you know systems and and how they manifest and um and mostly concentrating it of course on like um the oppression of women or women um you know, fighting for all kinds of rights. Um, and so it was really about the um, patriarchy as a way of like holding down women and women fighting against that. So that was it. But now, now I see this as something different. As I learned a little more about it, um, it's, I think if I am, you know, thinking about it um, correctly, that it's uh, a continuation, an extension of the conversation about patriarchy and sexism, but it really just concentrates now on on the, I guess, the masculine or male part of it, right? That uh, these things uh, affect both society and uh, men, right? Um, because men um, we see historically being um, more aggressive, more aggressive, and um, things around um, um, using. Uh, sexual violence and things of that nature and so I think this poses that um, that men are not inherently like that and that is these are the social constructs um, uh, that, we, that we created and that we contribute to yes it's okay Lucy it's okay that's probably mama. Okay. okay Lucy started barking and we completely lost our uh, train of thinking so uh, we're just going to move on. Uh, uh, so <laughs> I'm going to read a, uh, a definition that I found online. It's attached to an article that will be in the resources in the YouTube channel. So just scroll down and see the link there. Um, and uh, the definition in there for toxic masculinity goes as such. Toxic masculinity is 
a narrow and repressive, repressive description of manhood, designating manhood as defined by violence, sex, status, and aggression. It's the cultural idea of manliness, where strength is everything, while emotions are a weakness, where sex and brutality are yardsticks by which men are measured, while supposedly quote-unquote feminine traits, which can range from emotional vulnerability to simply not being hypersexual, are the means by which your status as quote-unquote man can be taken away. So I thought that was a really good uh, definition, and I'm... Um, you know, um, interested to see if other folks um, have um, other definitions that they've come across. So please let us know. Um, so it was a broader concept uh, in talking about it. And that was, I think that's really good, right? Because we're, we need to start looking at these uh, things and start talking about them in a broader context other than women as subservient or in a subjective role to this inherently powerful thing that men have, right? That it's a conversation about how gender roles can like truly or, or constructed uh, gender roles are like a truly, um, um, you know, harmful for, for everyone, for, for really. For yeah, everyone. I was thinking, I'm like, those guys, it's violence in itself. By creating such harsh, rigid, you know, unforgiving roles for people. And, you know, it, it really is like an, an act of violence if to stay in it sometimes or towards yourself and then to be out of it from other people. But it, be, it becomes so difficult to even have those conversations about, you know, like realness right it's like what does it really be mean to be a man what does it really mean to be a woman i mean even in the trans community we grapple with these things right, so right. some people identify as binary non-binary um and it's uh and we wonder sometimes what people grapple with like am i trans enough am i not trans enough or do i identify as trans and just identify as a man or identify as a woman there are many questions that people have and i I think it's wonderful that people are grappling with that and really and thinking about all angles of this because um, we we can have better solutions and better conversations that it's not just women having to change the way they do things or fight right for these things but that men also have to completely shift or uh, um, I should say um, stereotypically everyone. yes everyone is stereotypically like cis men like. Um, what it means, the, the lessons, you know, the, the lessons that we learn as uh, little girls and little boys, um, that needs to just like shift completely. Because that's a big contributor to the rape culture we live in as well. Um, the, you know, the fear of rejection, the being hypersexual and aggressive, you know, like not taking no for an answer, you know, that macho man taking what he wants from a woman, you know, just all those things that go into it. And I know like for me personally, I, now that, you know, I have a son, I want him to be emotionally intelligent, to be compassionate to you know have empathy and sympathy i want him to be able to communicate effectively how he's feeling or you know like i don't want the fear or the like the fear of um of judgment or anything like that you know stop him from being you know like a normal functioning healthy adult person mm -hmm. child because you know like I see other children and I love that, you know, when they're crying, you know, especially if it's like a little boy and he's crying that their mom or dad is not like, stop crying to being a little girl. It's right, always right. like, what's going on? What are you feeling? How mm -hmm. can I help? And I'm like, I feel like that builds a better person and a better character right. than telling somebody to stiffen up their lip or, you know, like, this is how boys act. This is how right. girls act when we're just people and mm -hmm. people have emotions. But you know what? I also want to talk a little bit about like, I mean, the, apparently there's a his, there's a reason why or like a history behind um, why we've, you know, talked about why we said, you know, don't cry, do this or do that. Right. It was, I think, in a lot of ways, a means for survival right? Definitely. because of so much freaking oppression. You know, it's like sometimes 
there's you know people were in a state where you just couldn't do anything so it was just like you know that's it suck it in and move it forward you know and a lot of us have had to do that and right? it's really high in like you know like poor communities and people of color because you know the trauma of everyday life especially for young men growing up in these neighborhoods the ptsd they deal with mm -hmm. you know we often are we have we have to desensitize ourselves or at least act like we're desensitized the baby's up. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> I had to go um, check on my, my baby and, you know, see what he was feeling and <laughs> work out these feelings with him before I could return. So, but um, as I was saying before, um, we often have to wear this mask right. just to, just to get by. And it gets so ingrained in us and sometimes it's hard to turn off, but we have to actively be helping and nurturing that off switch. But it, it, I think it speaks to though, as an oppressed community or oppressed communities, like I think it speaks to like this, we're getting past just surviving. It's like surviving and thriving, right? So that was about, you know, we're surviving right now we don't have a choice let's just move it right and i although i think a lot of people still don't have those choices you know like we are working and we're thinking a lot about what thriving means and connecting that to how we like basically starting from you know uh what is it from zero you know and that is with the kids you know we're often saying you know children are our future and stuff but i i get so mad when people say that sometimes because i'm like what do you what exactly do you mean so in this instance, I think it's like uh, one uh, example of how we're going back to like, just kind of continue to deconstruct this stuff because it's so harmful. And earlier I said something and because you have to go check on Joaquin, I had a moment to think about it. And I was like, even in the trans community, we grapple with these things. And I have to, mm -hmm. in thinking about this, I have to say uh, probably it, it is the trans and intersex community that actually like were the ones that, you know, really started p pushing these questions about masculinity and stuff right um like what uh, how harmful um it is or even because we we were grappling with it ourselves in terms of uh what does it mean to be trans or what does it be a trans man is it does it have to be a physical thing does it is it in a name is it in the way i walk is it in the way i talk do i have to look like this right um and so we even it, it, you know, we introduce concepts of non-operative trans people, you know, like a person that doesn't have to have any operation or take any kind of hormones, right? And still being accepted as a trans person because we've discussed what it means, this broader concept of maleness and femaleness and all that. So, yeah, I wanted to go back and just like pay homage to that because I think that those are really difficult um conversations that I think a lot of people had earlier on uh, especially I mean even in the uh, gay male community um, you know feminine men you know um, being huge targets so I think in terms of this work it always comes down to <laughs> women trans people and femmes you know what I mean <laughs> like it just it just does um, in this um, this work to like um, I don't know like push push the boundaries and stuff, you know? Mm. It makes me think about the little shirt you had on walking yesterday and the conversations we had about that. Oh uh, yeah, um, because you know, as you know, I'm a mermaid <laughs> and I got Joaquin uh, a little mermaid uh, pajama set, this t-shirt and pants. And I remember a couple of months ago, I went to visit my grandmother in New York and she was like, you know, I just want to ask you a question, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you to think anything, but aren't you worried about what people are going to say when you dress him up like that? And I was just like, what do you mean? Even though I know, I just wanted her to say it so mm -hmm. she can see how it sounds out loud. So I was just like, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, well, you know, because, you know, sometimes the stuff that he wears is kind of girly and what are people going to think? And I know people might say stuff to you. And I was just like, I could give, you know, two shits about how anybody feels about how I'm dressing him. And that shouldn't be anyone's concern. What should be their concern is, is he happy, safe, healthy? Right. Is he growing? Is he developing properly? The clothing is such an irrelevant thing. I'm just, I hate that 
we like we are so close-minded that an article of clothing can just change how people speak to a person how they view this person how they mm -hmm. respect them like it's ridiculous to me and even um out and I'm, I'm in a bunch of mom groups on facebook and there was one where they showed um this little boy i think he had longer hair so he had some type of braided style and like the mom posted it and was like oh is this too girly and then i commented i was like hair has no gender i'm just like this is a hairstyle if he has long hair there's certain things you can do with long hair i'm like mm -hmm. i don't get this whole all of these braids masculine are they feminine like they're braids and they, i guarantee you the children don't even know about that and they only learn about it because you're pushing it so hard on them kids mm -hmm. don't grow up saying this is what boys are supposed to do. This is what girls are supposed to do. This is not what they're supposed to do. They live their lives and they're happy. And if you just teach them about respect and boundaries and things like that, like as just regular people, not as this is how a man grows up. This is how a woman grows up. These are the things that you should know and you should do. It's just what do you need to know as a human being to just be a decent person? You know, like it's but maybe what if so devil's advocate, right? So like what if this is the way you learn about being a decent human being right you know like how uh, people are like you know i'm going to teach you the value of what it means to be a real man and a real man provides for his family and stuff and these are not actually like bad things in and of themselves right but it becomes something bad when every man is pushed up to that um standard and if you can't uh, meet that standard and you're it, less of a man right it creates basically you you're a fa you fail it's just it's just a system that fails it's a, you know what it means to be a woman is a system that fails because if you don't fit into that framework you're just not sexy enough beautiful enough for you know all that but what if you truly believe that this is how you raise your children like when girls are taught about manners and you know do the debutante things for some people they think that's ugh, but for others it's like this is what it means to be proper and so i don't want to yuck anybody's yum right but like how do we talk to how do we make this important to people like that like to say I, I'm, I'm sure that people are thinking that trans and gender non-conforming people are the weirdos or the ones that are you know like out of it and we're kind of talking about there is a, a huge spectrum of what um gender is and sex even <laughs> that we don't talk about uh, and we're pushing those things, right? But I think for a lot of people, they're trying to maintain a status, right? And so we are disrupting that status. And so it's difficult when you're talking to people that truly believe what they're saying, right? It's and, like, sorry, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like when people, that whole argument about the Confederate flag, mm -hmm. and now people are like, well, this is just a symbol of Southern culture. This is just like Southern pride. And then like having to explain like no it's not this is a symbol of racism and this mm -hmm. is harmful to other people like so it's just like that argument like oh they, it's like oh well, we, i don't mean it that way i'm just you know it's i'm mm -hmm. just flying the flag because you know i'm from alabama or something right and it's like but that flag has a different meaning but then i guess that speaks to an intersectional lens right because uh, for, for that or what we're talking about right now just looking at it in through one way right if we're if we're saying okay this is the way i was raised with values about how a proper woman should be and what a really good man should be and i'm incorporating what is currently happening happening in the world and what we're learning about uh, men and their futures and you know you add race and class and all that stuff to it then it's a deeper conversation to be had and then how does this translate to walking when you have little you know boys and girls but like little boys like how do you raise them and also how do you push against everything that people are going to say because you know when you were telling the story it wasn't about just you know mommy it was about people i think you put a picture up or something oh when you put the little headband put a little headband on his head and people were like angry about this headband like literally like this headband could make him gay or a trans woman or a trans girl that it's like then what's the problem with being gay or a trans woman right. even if that was what right, it did right. like why is that your business exactly right exactly but it's like um i i did the same with you but of course it, it's a it's a little more leeway with girls to dress in quote-unquote boys clothing than it is for boys to dress in quote-unquote girls clothing which in this situation yeah. the bad guy is anything feminine right or seen as feminine exactly exactly so it's like you know it's those 
harder conversations with those folks and then like how do you stretch this kind of conversation out throughout the the, the lifespan of a child or a young man or a boy you know um what would that look like i don't know i mean i know i'm learning as i'm going mm -hmm. but i feel like this old like you say you know there's always every day is an opportunity to learn yes. to grow and there you know there might be a perfect situation where i'm like ooh. I can teach him about that. Like I know when I was working in a certain uh, preschool, I had I found the perfect opportunity to teach about consent in a way that a baby, well, not a baby, he was three, mm -hmm. a way he could understand it because like he had given his toy to one of his friends and she didn't want to share his toy with him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, but I gave her my toy so she should share with me. And right. I was just like, even though you did that that doesn't mean that she has to do that and right. if she says she doesn't want to share then you have to accept that answer mm -hmm. she said no and that's no you you're allowed to not like it but you right. can't be mean to her or say you're not going to be her friend or you know do any of that stuff because right. you don't like her answer because i'm like sometimes you're going to hear answers you don't like and you have to accept it so i you know that's a little good mini lesson about consent mm -hmm. for him and then he was like oh, okay and i'm like you know there might be a different friend that might want to share their toys so you can ask someone else mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. to redirect so you know like everything's a teachable moment right i mean um we could think about it in terms of you know like people the what we're talking about right now the clothes that he's going to wear obviously people are always going to say something but you speaking up about it and talking about that importance i, I think that's really good in him hearing that um, the people that you're going to surround yourself with, right? Uh, other like-minded people and the way they want to raise their children. Um, you know, uh, also the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the decision around, you know, or, or really thinking strongly around um, uh, homeschooling because of how black boys are taught. And it's like a, a you know, like um, school to a prison pipeline. Um, so we're really thinking a lot about that and how that contributes to a lot of stuff. Um, and we could have a whole separate conversation about prison culture and how, of course, toxic masculinity is upheld there because it's a way of Survival. living and surviving, right? Um, you know, and it's in the ways, uh, the books that, you know, we're going to read to him, the conversations that we'll continue to have, but also like when people say, you know, um, boys will be boys, that type of stuff. And, um, yeah. and, and even how, how you know we see femininity and women and all that i think that all all of that contributes i mean having me as a freaking grandparent you know like you as a mom like the it, there's a lot of stuff um that we can you know grow on always it's a it's a constant conversation and a good one to have it, it would definitely be i would like to see what the world could look like um if we really like um just crush down on these uh, these ideas. It would, I think the possibilities are just fucking beautiful. I wanted to, you know, say before we like wrap up and stuff mm -hmm. that um, when you were saying before about how you know people say the children are our future, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking I'm like yes, like the children are our future, but we are also a part of the future because you can't have a future without a past and a you know and a exactly. present, and we have to actively contribute to said future. Mm -hmm. And if we want a certain future or we're envisioning a certain future, then we have to work towards that. It's like, how can I become a doctor? Well, first I have to go to first grade, then second grade. Like there's always there's steps to it, mm -hmm. and then eventually you're like, oh, all everything that I did led up to this, and the goal was met. So I feel like it has to be an active, interactive, yes. you know, like conscious decision to be like, I want more compassionate men in this world. So I'm either going to contribute by mentoring other men or I'm going to like raise a man like this, you know, like right, there has right. to be other ways because, you know, it, they're our future, but it also takes a village too. So we all have to be accountable because we are all going to contribute so you know the next generation the generation after that because mm -hmm. what we teach our kids or what they're going to teach their kids exactly. and it continues and on and on and on and we could break the cycle and we just have to be adamant about it and mm -hmm. just have to make that conscious decision and be aware that all everything that i say or do like directly or indirectly to my child is going to mold them into whatever person they're going to be and it could be subconscious mm -hmm. it could be very obvious but it always comes out. So, you know, you have to be careful about the type of lessons you're teaching, the type of environment they're in, the people who are around, the words that you're saying to them, how you're saying it to them, you know, the language you use, everything. Yeah. And this uh, actually, you know, helps a lot of young men as well, because um, 
they're suffering from a lot of mental health issues and depression and undiagnosed uh, yeah because um you know you got to be tough you got to be a man whatever that is right so we can we can break down we can continue to break down what this looks like right and we know that it's constructed because it shifts all the time you know you get a a popular cele celebrity wearing a pink shirt who's male and now pink is okay to wear among you know the the male population that's not gay you know so we see that it's trend some some of it is about trend some of it is about you know cultural shifts it's 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 just a, pl a plethora of things and then uh, for me instead of uh, fearing uh, these things um it's it's about uh, for me it's this wonderment like wondering like literally what the world is going to look like in 10 years um as we continue to grapple with um relationship constructs and gender constructs and um how we talk about sex and sexuality and and how we communicate and our spirituality and healing and all of these things combined like i i think it's just going to look beautiful yeah, it seem it seems like uh things are slowly changing. Well, even if you know with the government and society, it's not we as a Why people. Why did you have to pop my bubble? Right, I was in a nice little bubble in here. <laughs> I was. I'm continuing and saying that we as a people are shifting. Yes, yes. And it's going. It looks like it's going in a good direction. The way people are becoming more yeah. aware of themselves and others and the world around them. Yeah, just keep moving towards that keep moving enlightenment that. and i can say i've had the privilege of meeting some pretty wonderful um men uh, really uh wonderful men that grapple with you know power talk about power and talk about their relationship to women on uh, constantly and you know i want to see more of that definitely um so wow well, we ended up talking more about this than i thought we were so tired but this was a really good topic and i'm sure we could talk more about it definitely <laughs> yeah um but thanks so much for listening and of course we always ask you know email us questions any comments concerns uh, any definitions that people have come across uh, or any articles that we should uh, know about um check out the links on the bottom um, for some articles that can kind of further the conversation about um, toxic masculinity Bye. Bye, everyone.